What's going on, everybody? We're live again, STL Sunday. The point of this series is to take a project and uh, 3D model it live during this little stream here. So today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be modeling two items. First one is going to be like a scale radiator. And I'm gonna try and take this opportunity to show making designs that are easily adjustable to make multiple designs out of one you know, kind of project. And I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, by that as we get into it. Then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a shock building stand, kind of a functional tool that you can have and you know use around the actual shop as you're working, as you're building, all that. So that's the two projects we're gonna handle today. Like I said, uh, that's the goal. The first one though, the one that we're gonna jump into is building a radiator. So switch to a screen share. We're using Fusion 360 to model. Fusion 360 is free. It's linked in the description below. You can go there, download it. And it's not the CAD program that I'm the most comfortable with, but it's one that's free. So showing you guys what we're actually using is much easier than showing in a different program and going through. I'm gonna be actually doing my best to go through and telling you the key commands that I'm using and try and make this a little bit more of an instructional um, you know, how to kind of then, uh, then just breezing through it. So I'll use as much or you know, put as much information in there as I can for that. But thanks everybody for joining in. Yes, I'm on time today. What do you know? Again, thank you everybody. Thanks for joining in. Looks like we got people kind of coming in from, from everywhere. Always good to see. So we've got the screen share up. We've got a blank fusion 360 file open here the let's see i'm going to this you know i just googled aluminum radiator so that's what you see on the screen here and that is kind of it's just for some some reference something along these lines of this this center one here just the standard side tanks with an inlet you know top corner bottom corner maybe we'll show how you could draw it in multiple ways to put those inlets you know this this tube inlet here and output here, vice versa. So that's the that's the idea of what we're gonna do. Throw something together. I like this style more for our rigs rather than like a top tank style, something you'd see in an older school vehicle. But that's the if but if we do this right, we'll make it so that you can actually, you know, it would be something you could handle as well. Dock that so that we can get there. All right, we'll get into the drawing here. We're gonna start a new sketch by clicking that top left sketch, and then we'll start our sketching on the front plane. Up here is this little square. Uh, it's a little bit cropped out on your view up there. There's a, uh, the view trying, or the view kind of, let's see. Um, drag that over so you can see it a little bit better. All right, there you go. So this top thing up here, you can click on that, the top right corner, and that's how you can kind of get around or get square to your face a little bit easier. We're gonna start this pretty simple with a, a rectangle, just general shapes. We don't need to actually stay to dimensions at first. You can just kind of loosely sketch and then go back and constrain it to the size that you want. So I use a lot of hotkeys and I'll try and call out when I'm doing that. Like you can click L on your keyboard to start the line command. Then oftentimes you can use construction lines. And I use construction lines a lot. After you hit L, then on the right side here, you can see this tree. There's this little construction button. You can click that or you can just use X on your keyboard to toggle that on and off. But we'll see. So we're gonna find our midpoints. We're gonna take that construction line and constrain it at the midpoint of our origin. I just like to keep everything kind of around the, the origin point. It helps, helps things stay where you want them to. You always have a nice frame of reference. But like I was saying, I want to make everything in this so that I can draw this once and then I can come back into this first sketch and adjust things so that it just adjusts the entire radiator. Like I want to make a two inch, a three inch and a four inch radiator. That's what we're going to do for this. Well, we'll probably do 50 millimeters, 75 millimeters, 100 millimeters, just, just for reference. So we're going to click the D for dimension. And then we clicked on that bottom line. It gives us that bottom dimension tool. Like I said, we're going to do a 50 millimeter. So I key in five zero. 
that gives us a 50 millimeter width. We're gonna keep all of them about the same as far as height goes though. Um, it's always good to keep a, you know, just like a, a ruler around and not necessarily so you can measure parts, you can use a caliper to get closer, but just to kind of see something and see, you know, kind of gut check yourself. Like is, is a two inch radiator too tall? You know, I'm talking 50 millimeters for width, but just kind of look, I think two inches is too tall. So let's go to an inch and a half basically. So that's, we'll just go, let's see, an inch is 25. So let's go to uh, 35 millimeters tall. That's kind of a, that gives us a good, a pretty decent height. That's a little under an inch and a half, but just kind of something to look at and go from there. So now we've got a very simple rectangle drawn. We're going to come up, click the extrude command at the top. We only have one profile drawn. And let's just make the, the width of this thing around uh, seven millimeters. Anytime I'm going to put an M3 screw through the bottom of something, I always want like at least six millimeters. That's my, that's my bare minimum for a width. And, and then, you know, from there you can adjust, but seven just because. So that's, uh, there's our scale right now. Just kidding. Gives us just the, the basis. I'm going to pull open my images again, just so again, something to, to look at. We need to add tanks to the side. And then of course we need to add what would be the, the ribbing to this thing. So let's go rather than actually, let's go back. We're going to click down in this tree down here in our design history, right click on that, the last part of it. And then we can hit edit feature. And rather than seven, I'm going to go to, I'll go to nine millimeters. And there's a reason I'm going to add two to that. So again, now we're going to go back to sketch. We're going to click on the front face of that previous sketch. And now we're going to add a rectangle through the middle. We're going to hit D for dimension. We're going to click on the far left side to the tank or to this edge. And we're going to do, do five millimeters to start. Same on the other. So that, then we're going to hit that extrude button at the top again, select there, and we're going to go negative one. So that's going to cut one millimeter into our previous. Simple. Now, one other thing that I'm going to go back and do again, I'm going to go back to our initial, our very first feature, click edit, and then in this direction pane that pulls up. I'm going to go to symmetric and rather than nine, we're going to go 4.5. So that way we still get nine. It's just going to go 4.5 each direction, but I'll show you why I want to do that. So the reason I changed that is now everything's centered on the origin point. So I can, we just did that cut there. And if I want now I can go up to the top in the create, we go down to mirror objects. We're going to select in this bottom tree that last extrude and then the mirror plane, we can do our, our front plane, which is our X, Y. No. Actually, sorry, X, Z, that was my fault. So objects, the last cut, mirror plane is X, Z. So, we're just doing this so that whenever I adjust one thing, it'll adjust both or everything. Uh, we're going to check, I'll check in on the comments for just a second. Uh, all the 3d printer, this, I am designing most of this for 3d printing. That's kind of the point of what we're discussing. Just it's something that is becoming a more and more common tool, but oftentimes people who buy a 3d printer don't necessarily can't take full advantage of it 
if they don't know how to model. They can only download things and then print those, where if you can learn to get into this habit of modeling things yourself, it can be one of the most powerful tools you can have for such a low cost of entry. And then as far as if you're looking at, you know, 3D printer things, on my website, harleydesigns.com, you can go there and I've got a page in the garage section. If you go to Harley's garage in there, then there's a page for just my 3D printers, the 3D printers I have, the filaments I use, the softwares, the everything. I tried to break it all there and it's in one, one simple thing. So fairly, fairly simple start. So going back, we're going to create another sketch on the front plane again, doing that. I want to just take a, I'm only going to do this on the top, but I want to take a, just a little bit of a step out of the top. We'll do uh, actually a half a millimeter would be fine. I don't want it to be much, but I just want to do a cut, a cut through everything just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a dimension difference there from, from the top portion. Now from here, another sketch on that front plane, and we are going to start the process of trying to make this actually look like a radiator. Now this is going to be a portion that we're going to have actually be uh, extruded just a little bit. So now I want to make this, each of these things, like 0.8 millimeters. And I'm doing that, I want to do that in demand or in a, uh, interval of 0.2 millimeters because I generally point uh, print at 0.2 millimeter layer heights and you want to make sure that it's somewhat of an even layer height number it just seems to to work best you'll get cleanest prints if you kind of keep those things in mind now I'm going to drag that down to the bottom and the same thing I want to make sure that it starts at a pretty decent point so I'm going to start it at 0.8 millimeters from the bottom as well. Then we're gonna go in and we're gonna use the rectangular pattern. So the objects we're going to drag and select around that. Direction, we're just gonna click one of these vertical lines so that it goes usually up. Distance, uh, we need to do not 0.8, we need to do 1.6, I believe on this, how this one does math. Yeah, 1.6 millimeters so that you get the spacing and the then the width of the actual object. And then we can just click this quantity number. Is it going up? I don't know why that quant. Oh, I was clicking the quantity in the wrong direction. Sorry. So back to 1.6 and then we need this quantity to go up. Another difference. Okay. The distance on this one is not the distance per spacing, like the programs that I'm used to working on. It is the total distance. So we had what 35 millimeters total height. So that's why now we're at 32. So we're just gonna, we're cranking that up to the, the area we need it and we're just gonna add until we, we like it. That's 18. Let's go, no, well, let's go back to 18. So that created a bunch of those lines for us. finish our sketch, we'll do our extrude. Now we have to pick all of those. We could have not done this in a sketch and just extruded one of them and then patterned the features rather than patterning in the sketch and then having to click all of these, but it's just sometimes just doing it and getting it going is the fastest way rather than always thinking about the way that you have to have to do it. So we're going to go out half of a millimeter. 
That'll get us something that when it's 3D printed, you'll at least see those, the differences in size and ribs. You could crank that spacing down if you wanted, try and get a lot more in there. But for this application, I think that will do just fine. Sorry, my chat keeps freezing, but keep, keep cranking away. Now we did that mirror earlier down here in this, the bottom portion of this screen. If we actually click on that mirror and we just drag it to the end, now we can actually right click and edit that. And then in the objects, we can also go back and select that. Well, we can just select both that one that we just did and the previous cut that we did. Why will, oh, I want it to do features, not. There we go. So now we went back and edited it, edited the mirror so that it mirrored both the cut that we did to the backside and the extrusion of those ribs. Now let's do just a little bit of detail work around the outside of this, try and make it look more reasonable. Go 1.5. Whoops. I hit a button on my keyboard and it accidentally changed. One point five seems like too much. Go to grab that. So some of these, uh, the radius on some of these is is harder than others. Some of them are they're like the you know this one's more of a square tank. I don't mind how that looks either. Let's uh, let's put this you know kind of chamfered edge on it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put a, a chamfered edge on the top. We'll leave it a little bit more hard edged and uh, so I'm not going to take all the radius off of it. We're just going to go to like a little a half of a millimeter, just something. adding some constraints just to make sure everything stays where it needs to. D for dimension, picking some sizing that we like, clicking the extrude button, clicking the two profiles that we're trying to create. Let's drag that through. Fairly easy. Let's see. I'm just looking at a couple of images. Let's through a half of a millimeter radius or a chamfer on the top of that one just to. Now, let's create a couple of mounting points on the bottom here. And these we want to stay consistent throughout our sizes. So hit L for line and X for construction. Click to the two center points and then we'll click back on that line. And again, 
make it center about the origin. D for dimension. Let's make uh, the mounting points on this 35 millimeters apart. It's a decent spread, should always be fairly safe distance. I'm gonna click D for dimension. We're gonna make these uh, 2.6 millimeters, which should give you enough bite on a uh, three millimeter screw so that it can hold it securely into place. Then holding control and clicking both of the circles, we're gonna hit the equal command. Now we're gonna select those two profiles and we're gonna drag these up. Let's go, uh, let's go 11 millimeters. That gives us enough clearance comfortably for a 10 millimeter M3 screw. Should be comfortable for most people. So we have a set distance. Now, one thing we could do is rather than 3D printing a cap, let's Let's draw a circle on this and let's plan on using a cap head screw. I like making things so that you try and use something else like a, like a cap head screw, for example, it's going to have a different texture. It's going to be metallic, looks pretty good. And just overall, then if you just put a screw into it, it, it changes it up. It doesn't look like just a 3d printed part. I mean, a cap head screw doesn't have the, full detail of a, you know, of a radiator cap or anything like that. But the, uh, you know, just something, if, if you use it in black or if you decide to use it in a, a stainless, I'd probably use stainless, you know, but just like a stain, the, the cap of a, of a stainless screw like that, I think would look better than most other options. So. We'll do that. Now we're going to assume that it needs to be pretty, pretty short. So D for dimension again, 2.6 millimeter. I need to select that previous line again, and then I'll hit X to change it to a construction line. So it doesn't try and make a profile out of it. So that now we're going to do a extrude again. Now we're going to cut in We'll just go to nine millimeters. It's not really interfering with anything. Shouldn't be much of a problem where it's at. Plenty of clearance for an eight millimeter screw then. But let's uh, check in on comments for a second quickly. Again, say hello to everybody. Thanks everyone for joining in. A bunch of that. Um, people talk, again, talking about 3D printers. Creality, I use the TiVo printers. I like those. I've got a torna TiVo Tornado and a TiVo Nearest. Those are both been great, but you know, like the Creality's are common, the, you know, Ender, three, five, six, all those. There we go. Um, <laughs> yes, all of the, the beard and or uh, mustache comments are now gone since I'm on my way back to looking more common. Uh, my friend got an ultra wants to know if there's any way to get the shocks to hold oil longer. That's likely on how they're being built. That's a big thing about that. And, and shock building stand is something we're going into. Usually it's from overfilling. That is normally how, how, uh, those problems arise too much oil in them in a, in a scale shock body size. All right, let's just do a little bit of cleanup here. I'm going to put a half a millimeter radius on that and then add a similar chamfer to how we did the other side. Uh, doesn't want to, doesn't want to fit that, but we'll put a little one in there. That's only a quarter of a millimeter, which is almost going to be unnoticeable, but it looks better in our model. So we're going to keep it. Now this looks very, it's very simple for a radiator. You could sit here and add all kinds of details. Let's add a couple of them though. Um, let's add one on this side first. Let's add a, an area to add some 
some tubing or some, you know, things like that. I like to use just regular, like regular wiring. Wiring works well as, as scale radiator tubing. So let's do a 3.1 millimeter hole just in case you did want to like epoxy a set screw in there first and then, you know, put the a sheeting over that or something like that. There's a number of different ways you could do it, but 3.1 for now, just the common size I use. We want to locate it off of the outside. I'm going to go four from there and 2.6. It's going to work okay. And then we're going to do one more down on the opposite corner. We're going to make sure that it's the same size. And then again, we're going to locate it off of the outside edges. So done a little bit of that. Now let's just take that in there. I don't want to go too far in four millimeters. That way we still leave a decent enough. Oh, that takes a lot of, let's adjust that sketch and we'll take the diameter down to, to two point. Uh, yeah, 2.6 is fine. Same as our mounting screws on the bottom. So that just gives us a couple of spots to add some, some scale detail type tubing. But this would just be one variation of this. The reason that I you know was kind of using this is now that we've got, say this, say this is as simple as we wanted. We could come in here now and I could save out on the, the left side here. We could right click, save as STL, and then we're just going to this is all fine. Save as desktop 3D print files, and we'll call this a 50 millimeter radiator. Well, I spelled radiator wrong for sure, but oh well. So we've done we've done that. Now we can come in and just change to that 50 to 75. And now we find one issue at the very top there. It looks like I did not constrain this side to that line. So we're going to make sure that those are coincident. So now we've got, and we could do the same thing, right click, save as STL. Hit OK. 75 millimeter radiator. Go back in there. 100. Now we've got a, a two inch, a three inch, and a four inch radiator, for example. That one looks ridiculously big. I think that's that's unnecessary. But oh, true. No, I did not put uh, HD on this one anywhere. It's pretty tiny. I feel like there were some other things that I forgot to do that on, but I feel like this one's too small to do that. But, you know, like say a four inch is too big. We could do a, a 50, a 60, and then, you know, I could just have all of these little variations of it, save all of these, and then I'll just, I'll upload all of these files in a, in a directory on, or on a, a single part of Thingiverse and have a 50, 60, 70, 80, you know, I'll go from 50 to hundred and it's just, but I only had to change in a, a few numbers to change all of these different, all of these different sizes without any extra work. Um, this question, I'm guessing if we change the height and add some big side tubing pieces, this could make a sweet intercooler for a drift build. Yeah, so you, I mean, you could go in and change the height as well. The only thing you would need to do is, uh, is possibly look at changing the, 
the ribs. You might have to change the rib spacing or the number of ribs for it actually to, to work out, but that might be the only thing. Fairly, fairly easy to do. You know, and if you wanted to do something for like a, a, a drift build and make it a, an intercooler, you could even print the charge piping for that. You know, maybe print it so that you can use some uh, blue heat shrink to actually make the, the couplers or things like along those lines to make it look even better. Even if it's all printed in one piece, but just put some heat shrink over it, get it in blue, hit it with your heat gun, and now you've got a, something that looks nice and scale and super easy. So. This is just, again, a very simple, but the whole point of trying to go through this part was to show trying to make something and adjusting just a simple dimension to be able to make multiples. Now, no matter which one we put this as, our mounting points at the bottom always stay the same. So the mounting points, you know, even if we make this, if we edit that sketch to 200, which is a ridiculous looking, radiator. Again, our mounting points stay the exact same, 35 millimeters apart. I don't even like to look at something that looks that bad. So pretty easy. HD the lateral side. It's a, it's a possibility. It's just so tiny. I don't want to force it. Not everything needs it, I suppose. But that was about all I was really looking to try and show for that one. Jumping into the next one, though. The next one, this is about, you know, if you've ever built a kit or built shocks, trying to get everything assembled and your oil filled and doing all of that, if you'd like to bleed the shocks by standing them up, then possibly having a shock stand is nice. And even if you're not just into scale trucks or you have race cars where you're, you're working on your shocks a lot more then you know, why not? It's uh, it's something you could easily have. Now, one I found is, so there's this one from a main you can get for 10 bucks. So, I mean, I linked this one in the description as well. It's like, it's only 10 bucks. You can just buy a shock stand with pretty affordably this one. Looks pretty good. It's got a little drawer underneath even for all of your shock accessories, <laughs> like 10 bucks. That's pretty cheap. But if you got a 3d printer and you just want to print your own, we have the technology. So now on this one, this is going to be a, a multi part Print. I don't want to print just a big shock stand standing up. It could be a lot of support material. could be a lot of just various things. So instead, let's look at this as a, as a multi-piece design, and then we'll show breaking it apart to get that ready to 3D print. So we're, I'm going to start with this one. Let's see. How do I want to start? I'm going to start by, instead of starting with one of the, the normal sketch planes, I'm going to offset one of the side planes and I'm going to make this shock stand about four inches across. Yeah. Four in, mm, let's go five inches. So 125 millimeters. Well, let's divide that in two. So 62.5, right? We're going to start on that right side. We'll start with a base for now. Come on. There we go. Wouldn't let me click and drag. I don't know why. So at the very, t I'm assuming that I'm going to have a base for this. And then I'm assuming I'm going to have the top where the shocks go. Now I want to design this with not just scale shocks in mind, maybe multiple sizes. Maybe we have parts that you can change out depending on the size that you use. But let's see, for example, well, for example, I've got the, the raw builder or the, sorry, what does element call theirs? Not a raw builder's kit. 
It's not a scale builder's kit, it's HPI. I don't know what they call this, just a builder's kit. But different shocks have different shock body diameters. So if you make it too small, larger body shocks won't fit. If you make it too big, then the smaller body ones will just fall through. All of which we would like to avoid from happening in a functional tool that we're trying to create. So I believe these are a 10 millimeter bore on a element. Yes, they are. Which gives us a shock body diameter total of you know, 12 to 13. So if we make it 14 millimeters, that should catch, catch the hard parts on the top of this one. So that's gonna give us a 14 millimeter hole. We should have at least say four millimeters around each side of that. So we're going to add D for dimension on the keyboard and say 14, 18, 22 millimeters. And at the bottom, I'm just trying to add a little bit of width to it to make sure. One thing we could do is let's call this 11 millimeters and then we're going to change the center line to a construction and then we'll mirror everything. The base. I think having it twice as wide as the top should be somewhat sturdy. 44s. Mm, that's, let's go 25 millimeters. That'll give us a two inch base. Now we obviously don't need all of this height either. This shock fully extended with a rod end, it, you know, going to call we're going to go to 90 millimeters now that's the shock doesn't it doesn't need to be the full height of a shock it just needs to be where you know it'll catch one of the either the spring load adjuster or the lip around the top cap so 90 should do it for most you know shocks four inches or less selecting mirror at the top we're going to click these items mirror it about that Okay. We're just going to do a four millimeter wide, four millimeters. We'll go with that for now. Um, all right. Checking the comments since I haven't been paying a ton of attention to comments yet. Shock stand could also be a tool stand. It could, it just sometimes, you know, with tools, you get, especially if you have longer tools or heavy, you know, it might want to get a little top heavy, but depending on what you have for sure. Yeah, buy a shock stand for $10 or print one for 10 cents. It might cost a little more than 10 cents to print one, but you know, it's just how, how much do you want to run your printer? But why not? 10 bucks isn't that expensive, but also if you want to print one, why not? Uh, let's see. My buddy used an air pump leak. Not even... Yeah, I, I, it's still talking about shock rebuilding. There's some, yeah, must have must have done something on that. Isn't twenty five millimeters equal to an inch? Well, twenty five point four millimeters to an inch, so very similar. It's just a. I like to work in in millimeters more you know most common it's just easy uh would only take a few minor adjustments to make that uh sort of shock stand into a tool stand yes so back to drawing anyway we got we have this piece now now i'm going to go ahead and mirror this i'm going to click bodies up at the top, the pattern type, and select the object. And then the mirror plane is going to be our right plane. That's why I offset my plane before so that I could do this. That allows me, if I want to, I could adjust the offset of that mirror plane to, ad to adjust the width of this overall. So now I want to do again off, go to construct offset a plane 
We're gonna offset the top plane and we're gonna offset it up. Now we did 90 millimeters total before. I'm gonna go to 80 to start with. We can always go back and adjust a few things. but So we're gonna select that plane that we just started. And I'm gonna make this, I wanna try and make this so that we can slot these things together easily. We're gonna make sure we have about four millimeters on the outside. Now I'm dimensioning off the very top, even though the intersection points further down, but meaning, you know, I'm dimensioning from this point up here, but with this line as, as things draft down, it still gets us reasonably close to where we need to be. I'm not trying to intersect it. I'll show you exactly what I plan to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab and create another couple of rectangles. We're going to dimension those. Uh, we're going to, we're going to dimension off of the back side. 10 millimeters seems good. I'm going to select those two lines and just hit the collinear tab up the top just to make sure that they are at the same spot. So I only have to adjust one dimension if I want to adjust things. We're going to call these the same width as well. So I want these to be 5.5 is fine. Oh, well, let's see. Called that four. I think I Yeah. Call it five millimeters on both. Gives us a look gives us a half a millimeter of clearance on either side. And now yeah, like someone was saying up here, as far as making different inserts, we can easily do a couple of things. One thing we can either when we finish this top panel here, we can make it and have different sizes available so that when we upload it to Thingiverse, we can make it so you have a 10 millimeter shock diameter, a 12 millimeter and a 14 millimeter. And you just choose which one you want to print and, and build for that. Make, should make things pretty simple. So drag that up five. We need to make sure that it's a new body in this, this drop down here. Oh, it's just out of just getting covered up. So the operation drop down to new body. Now, technically things are intersecting here. And if you are new, there's actually tools you can use up in the top here, this inspect, you can hit inspect, then you can hit interference if you like and select everything and then click compute. And it will tell you the areas that are intersecting. So show you right here. Things are colliding here. So this is a good way to check your designs. If you've never done that before, it just shows you if things are not going to properly fit, you want to have a little bit of interference or a little bit of, of room for things. This is a way to check that you're not messing up. So we saw where that interference was I'm going to right click. We're going to draw some rectangles, dimension up from the bottom. This is going to be at 80 millimeters because that's where we offset that plane to. Then we're going to make this, um, what, 5.5? 5.5 millimeters tall gives us a little bit of comfort there. Now, this what well wrong place to dimension we're going to dimension from that 
outside there to this. And we're going to go to 10 millimeters because that was the same. Now we can click on that and we can drag it. Well, I can't drag it all the way through. We're going to go to is it five. Actually, I need to do a two sided cut because we cut directly on something, which is not how I normally do. So we're going to go to negative four. 0.5 in one direction, and then in the other direction, we're just going to do 0.5 millimeters. Oh, one other thing that I, I did incorrectly there. Objects to cut, that drop down list, we need to only select the very first body. So we deselect body number three, and leave body number one. Now we have this kind of tab and slot design. Again, if you wanted to, we didn't do the other side yet, no. So I could select all these again, hit compute, and it shows us we don't have any interference on this side, but we still do over here. Now we can click mirror, change this from bodies to features. Click that cut we just did, mirror plane, right side. And now, uh, did it cut? It might, it might not like to do that because of the multi-body situation, but that's okay. We'll just do it the hard way. Should only take a second. We're just doing the exact same thing we did on the other one. I could go through and make all the other ways visible and make all of our make all the lines see through, but I'm just getting it done. Two sides. Oops, there we go. Objects to cut, one only. There we go. So that gives us the top portion anyway. Pretty, pretty simple. Now let's do something real quick. I'm going to add a hole over here, 2.6. Oh, not wanting to do it from two different areas, but that's fine. Let's do uh, six millimeters in. Now I, I want to do this. I just want to add a, a screw hole just so that let's go on negative 12. Now I did that a, a little bit backwards, but I did a 2.6 first. That's going to give us a threaded area. Then I'm going to go 3.1. We could have done that a couple of different ways, but so now the three millimeter screw will pass through this hole and this one in this, and then it will thread into the main body of the top. You know, that's not something you're going to really have to crank down on. It's just going to be to pin things together so they don't move. Here. 
features. I'm just going to click on both of those and mirror to the right. Click OK. So now we've got that pin design on each side. We're going to add some some reinforcement to the bottom too, so it doesn't want to just fly out from underneath of itself. But first, we're gonna add four circles, hit L for line, X for construction, and I'm gonna connect the center of all four of these circles. And then I'm gonna go through and select each of those lines. And we're gonna make those three lines equal. And lastly, I'm going to take that line and make it centered upon our origin. Now, when I drag things, they all will move together and the spacing will all adjust evenly. Now, one thing we also need to do is make all of these circles equal to each other. And then dimension one of these. Start with a, what did I say on the first one? 14 millimeter? Or wait, no. Yeah, 14 millimeter. And like we're going to easily be able to make multiples of this top insert to make things, make things adjustable. Let's adjust the spacing to 30 millimeters reasonable. Cut through. Pretty simple. Now with a shock stand, you could also make these just kind of uh, like a horseshoe shape so you could easily set them in there rather than having to drop them all the way down in, which is handy. If we wanted to do that, we pretty easily could. Maybe we make that a, you know, that could even be made as a, more of like an option, like print one version or the other. What I'm talking about is is just I'm, I'll do it on two of these, and we'll leave the other ones as is, and then I'll make the I'll make the versions when I upload. Adding a tangent constraint just so that keeps things the proper width. The only problem with with doing this is that you take away a lot of the strength of a printed part like that. Maybe you'd want to add some extra extra thickness if that's really how you wanted it. But that would make it easier to, to get a shock in. And then if you were still maybe a little bit worried about a shock falling out, you could do something like, let's add a circle or add a couple of concentric circles even. This will make that back one tangent to the back side. And then you just measure the shock just around the outside. So these are a set of Midatoyo digital calipers that I've had forever, but we'll measure the, the largest diameter on this. And that is 15.6. So on this inner one, let's make it 16. Let's go 16.5 millimeter. Still 17. Why not? Then I'm going to hit P for project and oops. We're just going to grab a couple of these lines. I don't think that it would actually need it in fusion, but it's fine. The reason I did that now is we created this little horseshoe that we could bring up just uh, say two millimeter. Now you've got a little retainer so you can bring the shock in and drop it into place and it it won't slide out. You won't be able to, you know, more easily just hit it and knock it out. So 
Simple enough. Maybe, don't hate it, do hate it, who knows. Pretty simple thing to add though. I kind of like it. Let's keep it. Let's it. And now that we did that, I hate that I didn't add it everywhere. So we're just going to go through and add it everywhere. First, I'm going to mirror that those cuts that I did about that plane to add those. And now we're just going to go through, add some circles. Sometimes this thing does weird stuff. So I added a bunch of these circles. I'm going to click on the outside ones, click on that outside one, click equal. Make those all there. Then we're going to select all the inners and hit equal again. Go through. Oh, I need to bring this before those. If I would have done that in a more normal way, I wouldn't have this yellow sketch down here, but it's what you get for free. So that gives us something to hold the shock body in, easier to drop it in, pretty simple. These side plates are, well, let's do two things first. Let's add a simple base. So we're going to do that, start a sketch, click the bottom, rotate to the bottom side. How do we want to make this look so that it doesn't look terrible? Let's add four millimeters around L for line, X for instruction. As I've heard me say that four billion times now. Can't express how handy construction lines are though. Let's get that. Now let's just oops. Four millimeter. Now we need to add some rectangles around the bottom here, which are going to be where the feet are going to go into. Hit D for dimension. We're going to add just a quarter of a millimeter here. And that's because I want this to be a pretty tight fit. Doing our construction line thing again. Midpoint constraints. And then again around the origin. Now we're going to make sure everything is equal. What are we going to go on there? Why are we not? Oh, our uh, 
Oh, that's why that is not. There we go. Horizontal constraint. Now we're good. So we'll give it a four millimeter base, new body again. Gives us pretty tight fit around those legs. If we wanted, we could say, let's go back to our very first sketch and hit edit sketch. Well, now let's not do that too much. We'll just do it here. I'm going to create another rectangle. Give it a half a millimeter above, four millimeters wide. Doing a midpoint. So I'm creating that just to give myself kind of like a, a foot, call it. So it's going to be negative five, but not a cut, just a join. We're going to do two sides, actually. We're going to do negative. 4.5 and 0.5. So, one, eh. we're going to take away that, all that space. We're just going to go, uh, we're going to delete that and we're going to. bring it all the way down. Now it'll show those things touching, but that'll just give us a place for it to sit. Changing my mind once more. It's one of these, just as you think, I'm going to change this back from two sides to one side. And the reason is I want to take that lip off of this back side so that it has a flat, a flat side to print on. That way I don't have to have a, a support because I want to make sure that these things all print laying flat down. So that's, that's why I made that change. I just, I realized that I was creating something that was just going to make for more hassle during printing. Oh, changing. I deleted that completely and made it coincident, but I think when I would have joined it, then it would have made everything one body. So um, I'm giving it a very small tolerance. And that's just for, for CAD reasons. I want all these things to be separate still. And we're going to, we're close to being able to show you what I mean by that. Or at least how it help how it helps with splitting things up. So I mirrored that over, but it didn't combine with that body. When there's a combined feature up here at the top though, we can click combine, select that one and that piece. And now that's, that's enough. That's a body all of its own now. Oh, sorry. That's body one. That's body two. So it shows you that is one part. Okay, what's some, sorry, looking at the comments now. Can't wait to print these out. Make it so the uprights slide through the bottom and can go all the, can't go, oh, I see what you mean. So they kind of went all the way through and, and snapped in. That would have been a, a method. This is, I guess, just putting it together from the top. I, I do see what you mean. And I see how that would actually be pretty, pretty handy with assembly. Feel like I'd want to make the base a little bit thicker at that point. Um, 
I, I, I like your idea and I, I think that it's a, a good one, Pro probably even better. But since this is live, I'm just going to stay with this one and it will be a little less than ideal. But I think your idea, uh, Darwin, is, is a better idea. Um, so anyway, now let's, let's make these things a little bit faster to print. So, that, you know, we've got all this, all this area on the side, which just isn't needed. So I'm gonna hit P for project and select. Okay. That just gives us the outside geometry. And then I'm going to select some of this, drag it inwards. Let's do negative 8.5. Finish, select that. Cut all the way through. Add our happy little radiuses, radii. Three millimeters looks pretty good. I like it. Now, now let's add our, Ooh, that one did not, oh, I undid my, I undid the change that I made and forgot to re-fix that. We're going to take this to one side. Okay, we fixed that. But technically, I think I would. Change one thing. I'm going to change this just for look. I could do this without making this change, but negative four. Okay. I did all of that just so that I could add like a little stupid text plaque and that it looked right. We're going to make this 15 millimeters tall, 20 millimeters off the base. Let's go negative three. Oops sketch on that plane again. And this is all just so that we could put that silly little HD text on here. Silly. We're going to offset Let's see if it will do this for me. Will it not let me use it as a negative space? It will not. That's okay. Why is that text not wanting to, ex there we go. One millimeter, but I'm gonna, there we go. 
unnecessary, I know. Let's go three. We're going to mirror those last couple. Hmm. Can't quite mirror, mirror the, you know what? We could leave the text mirrored or we'll just do it on one side. And then you guys can just print two of the other side. If you don't want my stupid little HD text on the side. Now, same thing. This is heavy for no real good reason, just other than, whoops, taking way too long to print. So so let's, let's get rid of all this heft that we just don't need in here. Let's do a six millimeter frame around this. Now we could leave a little bit of a tray in the bottom or something like that if you really wanted, but I think it would just be nicer to have this not take way longer to print and make these parts a little bit. Whoops. Let's go back through and do our favorite thing. Some internal radius work. Five mil there. Let's add a, uh, let's add a support in the center just so that it doesn't have a tendency to bow. Sometimes with 3D printing, if you don't, if you don't keep some rigidity over those, ah, oh, I changed my selection window somehow. Sorry, annoying. We're gonna put a, just put like a, a 10 millimeter support between them. And we're just going to add some more of our internal radius stuff. So this is a very simple version of a shock stand. Now, the whole breaking it apart thing. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to show you how to break it apart. After that, when I'm done, I'm going to go back in and make a few versions of this top piece to make it so that you can change it for other size of shocks that you may, may want to use. So you don't think the dovetail on the side of the base will allow it to be assembled. These should just drop right in. This piece here, let's see. Let me, oh, I see why you're thinking that, but I, I think that it's just something that's not looking at correction. I'll use the section analysis tool and I'll show you guys what I, 
why I think that it, it should be able to. So if I use the section analysis tool up in the inspect area, select that arrow and then drag it over. So these aren't actually interfering. I made it so that it was on the outside areas. So it should still drop down fine. What I could do is just square these up so that there wasn't this unnecessary draft in it. It would be a, a simple thing to change, but I, I don't think that that's gonna be an issue. I don't think it's something that we really have to, to worry about. But using the section analysis tool is a super, super powerful tool that you can use for a ton of different things. And if you use, like you can go through here and like up here right now, you can see how the section of this, like these two things are tight fit, but there's some room up here and this is hold, this is just a slide in. So it'll allow things to sit where they need to be. And just drag that through, make sure that both sides all created equally. Make sure that there's no issues anywhere. I think that looks good. Now, this really shouldn't, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should add. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is, is the depth of this back part, but like maybe it being a little bit too weak, but I think that it's probably gonna be okay. I, I don't expect too much of an issue. This thing isn't really holding weight all that much. It's just kind of creating, you know, supporting it. I think we'll be all right. But I hate hard edges in some spots. So we're going to do one last thing and then I'm done. We're going to break it apart. I promise. Let's just do a, a little two millimeter radius on the openings. Ooh, where did that edge get caught in? Oh, I selected that face. There we go. That looks better. I like that better. It'd be easier to get them in there. Could have chamfered it even, made it a little bit easier, but it's fine. It's fine. Leave it alone. One little chamfer. Chamfers look good. Let's make our part look good. Little bowl. So now the shock will come out a little bit easier. All right. So let's first save this. File save. shock stand. Now, the nice thing is, is that if you're just wanting to save these things out for 3D printing, all you have to do is click on the, the body up here, right click, save as STL, and then it saves just that body. So click OK and do shock stand upright HD. So, because that's, that's the one that has the HD logo, right? So body two, same thing, save as shock stand upright, non HD. That's the easy way, you know, other things you can do, like if you want to make multiple versions of something within a single file like this one. So say here, I can click on this top with this move function up here at the top. If I hit create a copy in this drop down, and then I just drag this thing over 50 millimeters, say, and click OK. Now, if I wanted to in here, I could make just multiple versions simply. You know, maybe not as easily as just adjusting well, actually if i do it here i might be able to go in and no i can't but it's fine so 
I'm not going to go through all these steps, but and I'm changing how I'm doing this anyway. So we're going to make these two things equal. I'm just doing this a super quick and dirty way. Like this wouldn't be the way I would actually probably get things done, but So, and then I'm, the reason I'm doing this is I want to make this diameter um, 1.5 millimeter. Well, let's just go one millimeter smaller because that's two millimeter of diameter difference. So doing that, selecting these items, and then I'm going to use the mirror function. We're going to bring that down. What was it? Four millimeters, five, negative five as a join. So now we have a version with a smaller opening, as you can see here. If you make two of the HD version, it will face in. Ah, you're correct. I should make, well, fine. You only get HD on one side anyway. Doesn't look that great anyway. It's okay. But, you know, this is just showing you, now we've got a couple of copies of this part in there, but this one's for a smaller body shock, this one's for a larger body. Simple, but effective. You can build shocks of various sizes with one stand. How convenient. I don't think that that needs much more explaining than that. That was really all we needed to, uh, needed to try and accomplish with this one. Again, trying to keep these streams a little bit more reasonable in length. So I'm going to go through and finish exporting, upload all of this stuff to Thingiverse. I will host them all up there for you guys. You can download it. I will update the link in the description of this video for you to go download these 3d print them. If you print them and you want to tag me in an Instagram story, I'll, share your post. I appreciate it. I see all you guys doing all of them. It's cool to see, but that is all we have for this one. Um, let's see if there's any comments before we knock this, knock this stream out. I'll just export a couple of these as you guys get in any last questions. And oops, I'm the wrong thing. Am I? Save as HTML. I don't remember what size this was. Shock stand uh, for 10 millimeter body shocks. And we'll export the last one. stand for eight millimeter body shots. There we go. Uh, license plate holder would be cool. 
license. Oh, you mean just like a little scale license way holder? See what you mean. Um, looks good and functional. Yep, it's a simple deal. Have a good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, none I see question. What would, what would I minimal need for com my computer to run these programs for 3D printing? Fusion 360 is not super uh, intensive on your computer. So this is my my cam next NZXT cam software, which just kind of tells like what kind of load is on my on my PC um, at any one time. Now the load up here is is CPU load. That's you know how hard your computer is working. Now you have to remember that I'm running streaming software and I've got four million windows of of Chrome open, which is is heavy on stuff. Uh, but like you can see here, GPU. That's my the graphics card. Most of the load on it is coming from OBS, which is the broadcaster software I use for going live. It's just, you know, same with, with the top pro the, the heftiest things on my computer right now are OBS, Chrome, and the RTX voice from the NVIDIA software, which cuts out background noise on my streams. Fusion isn't even on there. Now, granted, if I'm start doing some rendering or cutting or things like that, maybe it'll it'll get a little bit more intensive, but you really don't need all that much. Let me just drag this over and we'll just see what the, the CPU load does if I do some like section analysis stuff, which is probably a little bit more CPU intensive. And doesn't look like anything's even starting to register on it. This is a pretty basic file, but it's still, you know, I'm getting, if I try and freak it out and, and make it process a bunch, you can see it's climbing up there. But if you try and stay pretty reasonable with things, it's not, not going to be that intensive. This computer is built fairly well, but you don't need much. Most laptops will run it. Um... What size screws do you use for the top part? Uh, I think I made this for, we'll use the inspect tool from this surface to the, oh, did I find an issue? Did I, I didn't put a hole, see, I found an issue. I didn't have a hole in this upright. I need to go fix that before we upload. So I made that 12 millimeters. So I would go with like a 10 millimeter screw. It'd be pretty, you'd be fine with that. But let's fix my mess mistake that you made me catch. Using fixed. Thanks for inadvertently helping me catch my issue. Who said that? I don't remember who it was, but thank you. Darn it. I don't know who said it. Uh, Zachary Hilton. Thank you for that. What about a screw in each side of the base? We could, we could do that. I only I didn't make these very thick, but why not? Let's Ugh. I didn't make this base very thick. I feel like I should have made it thicker if we we're going to do this. But let's let's delete this sketch actually. And let's just do that. I want I think that this base should be thicker if we're going to do that. So we'll just select extrude, select the bottom. Pull down 2 millimeters. Now I'm going to do the same This isn't the most 
glamorous way to do this, but it's an easy thing to do just to grab a few things, pull them down. That gave us more thickness on the bottom. We'll easily be able to add a couple of screw holes like you were mentioning. hate when it does that. Fusion snaps to the dumbest things sometimes. So we added two, that means we have six total, three to the center. So we put an eight mil, we put a cut through all of that. So, and we added a five millimeter cut further. Good suggestion, worth doing. And we made some easy changes to make it happen. Except, see, it didn't do it again. The multi-body cutting thing is sometimes a pain. Well, at least for me in this software. The other one mirrored though, so we're good to go. I should have just broke that all the way through, I guess. There. Breaks through on both sides all the way. All right. Going back up, um, what software do you use for 3D design? It's Fusion 360, it's linked in the description. Um, Josh, make sure you check your HD Facebook messages. Will do. And uh, thanks, Philip Offroad, for the, the suggestion on the screw inside the base. It's a, it's a good ad. Hey, Josh, I think Josh should buy us all 3D printers. Good. <laughs> um, he usually bases around three millimeter screws, which is correct, and then just length varies from there. How did the radiator turn out? It's a very basic radiator, but it was designed to be modular and changed quickly and easily. Something very simple, just very basic to do. Thanks for taking the time to demonstrate. No problem. It's, these are these are fun. I actually I enjoy these quite a bit. And yeah, then a lot of uh, making what software. Um, I'm using Fusion on a five-year-old cheap laptop without any issues. Exactly. It, like I said, I don't think it takes much at all. Um, it's, and I think that you'll be pretty, just download it and get to using it and just start chipping away and, and just getting in there. And this base is really ugly and I've, I've got it. I've got to make some changes. Two millimeter champ. Uh, let's go 1.5. Little chamfer there. I'm gonna put a chamfer around these edges just, just because. Two millimeter, yeah. We'll throw, uh, let's just see if we can throw. It was just such an ugly base otherwise. Oh, 
Okay. That looks a little better, right? Doesn't look as blah. I'm going to stop myself from just keeping adding little things here and there. It's good enough. <laughs> um, would a counterboard be better than a chamfer for the shock preload collar to land on? So I'm the preload collar should probably land down here. Now this was this was a counterboard before. I just added the chamfer just to make it, you know. So it'll just kind of sit. The chamfer should also kind of help, you know, it'll keep it somewhat centered if it's larger, but. <laughs> Damn it, now I need supports. Wait, oh, what did I do that needs supports? I shouldn't need any support. You don't need supports for some screw holes. That's fine. Don't print with those with supports. You'll be good. This should all print just fine without supports. It should be, I don't think you'll need anything. How do I get good at this? Just practice, 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 watch videos, practice more, draw, just find something you want to draw and draw it. And then you'll, you'll like it more. Uh, do you add this to Thingiverse or on your website? Uh, thing, well, I'll put it on Thingiverse. That's where you can download it from. The link will be updated in this video's description, uh, probably in the next 30 minutes. So you'll be able to find it there right away. So first one to print it and tag me in, you know, put it in an Instagram story and mention me in there and then I'll repost your pictures. So how big is this again? Um, inspect tool. We'll go the outside to outside is 141 millimeters to the largest, the longest width part. And then the longest or the widest part, 58 millimeters. So 58 by 141, I think I said, right? That's about two and a quarter inches by six inches, roughly. Yeah, you're right with that small of a hole. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Wouldn't you need supports for the middle where the drivers sit on? Oh, uh, this is, these are all separate. This, like when you're printing this, you'll basically be printing this like this. This on the ground. Oops. You know. That there. Then you'll, this is not, I mean, you would nest these better and things like that, but you know, this would be, I would be printing it in, in this type of way where, you know, same with that one, all laid down and granted, I've got that at a stupid angle, but everything flat, it'll lay flat. Then you'll take it all off your bed and you'll just put it all together. Super simple. right? Uh, do you think each object you design should have a goal? Like in this episode, we are learning blah, 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 something. That's kind of what I tried to think about with the radiator. It was to try and make things that were adjustable with in a simple way. This one was to try and make another multi-part deal that is made to be broken apart and laid flat in the, you know, we've done other ones that were multi-piece, but this one again is just one of those interacting parts. This one, we used the intersect tool to show you guys that I showed you the, the section analysis tool, all of these things that are, that are super helpful and they're not, all you got to do is see them used and then see how you can apply them. And you'll, you'll understand and you use it next time. It's just, you'll be, you'll be happier once you start digging in. Uh, what about for next Sunday's idea, a shock tower? but would be strong enough to stand with hard hits for rock crawling and trail. Hard enough to stand a shock tower. I guess that depends on what truck it's for and all that is the problem, right? Uh, can you pull a Thingiverse file into fusion to tweak it? I'm going to quickly run through 
and a version of that. So open a new file. We're gonna go file, open. Now let's say, what, what do I have in here? Uh, it, I'm gonna show you why this is, let's just, where did I just start? Uh, open for my computer, 3D print files. You, the answer is yes and no, it's complicated is why. So let's just grab the radiator we did, 60 millimeter radiator. So this is how a print file from Thingiverse looks, you know, like if you were to bring it in, it's an STL or a stereo lith lithography, lithography file. So you can click on the bodies thing over here on the side and then this mesh body. So right now you can't go in and just modify this because this isn't a solid, it's a mesh, which is a whole different thing. But you can click and then go down to uh, from mesh to B rep, and B rep is a solid. So once you do that, create a new body, hit OK, and now this is a solid. And now from here, you can actually make some changes. So I could come in, click on this bottom surface, and you know, say I wanted. The problem is like this isn't an actual circle. It's, it's something else, but now, you know, maybe I wanted this to be a, a 3.5 millimeter. Uh, something's wrong with, oh, I might've imported this at the wrong scale because that came in way too small. But anyway, it's that mesh to B rep. That's the that's the important thing. And then you can actually do some things to simplify this, you know, to make these. It's all in the, is it the mesh tools or modify. Can't remember exactly there. It's not a super easy task to go through. So that's that's the reason. But anyway, the answer is yes and no. Um, Good, it will fit on my bed. Yeah, it should fit on this should fit on most common 3D printer sizes. Uh, the ten dollar Amazon caliper that I texted you about isn't even that bad, just a little increment sent just a little inaccurate since it's only has one decimal point. Yeah, just yeah, a set of calipers is fine. I I mean I've had these Mitotoyos for like like I said, like ten years. So it's uh or probably longer than that. They've been great calibers, but. Um, let's see what else we got. Maybe next Sunday's idea could be some sort of scale garage item. We've done a handful of those, but we could probably do more. It's easy ones to think of and be able to draw. So definitely an option. Definitely my go-to option, really. I really appreciate these vid videos. I learn a lot. Also having fun. Hey, good, right? Would the material it's printed be strong enough, I mean? Oh, you mean for a shock tower probably? Depends what material you're using. Regular PLA, not a great choice. You know, PETG might be, it all depends. Is it me or someone not paying any attention and keeps getting asked the same question? That's usually the truth. Wasn't interested in, t in 3D printing because I know it's not easy, but your videos make me want to try it. It's, it, it's worth trying. It's so powerful. It's just, and especially if you learn a little CAD and the things you can make for yourself. You have a dumpster, we have garbage cans. Maybe we need a recycling bin. <laughs> um, you can insert mesh, but many times I found that YouTube, there are too many sides of the part. Yeah, it's all, there's a lot of things to it. It all depends. Do I share these files to the community? Yes, Thingiverse. Linked in the description below where they'll be. You'll find them in the next 20 or 30 minutes. What filament can your printer use? Seeing the Woods Runner filament that seemed pretty cool. Um, I honestly, I print in PLA most of the time. It's, it's the easiest. It's so, it's not very finicky. It just prints well. It's not the strongest material though. It's just easy. And that's what I like. I make all the stamps out of. It's all out of just 
regular PLA. Hey, thanks, BT. 10 bucks. Appreciate the tutorials. I appreciate your donation very much. How about a generic receiver box for next week? That is something that I would like to do is a receiver box, maybe adjustable size again, um, and maybe trying to incorporate a seal that maybe we have around here easily that we can think of that we could add. So something like that I'm trying to think of. And yeah, that's, that's a, a good suggestion and one that I like. Fans for the radiator next time. That's an option. Uh, fans are a little hard to print just because of, you know, but we could probably come up with something that looked decent enough. I found 3D printing and RC go hand in hand. They definitely are. They definitely do. Um, a tire rack would be neat for next week also. Okay, got yeah, the scalish tire rack. So yeah, that money needs to go to a present for Nicole. <laughs> yeah, the to go pick up her cat. She, we're flying her out to go pick it up. A Traxxas seal would work. Yeah, it would. But what I would like to try and find is something that maybe we all commonly have around the house. Something that you just could have around and just, it's like, oh, I'll just use this. And I, I can think of something. I want to be able to do it so you don't have to go out and buy something. Like that's what I like about 3D printing. You can make things work with other things that just are around. So I'm going to think of something that you can find around the house that'll work as a seal. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. It's on my list for sure. So anyway, perfect. I think this was a good one. I think we got what we needed to out of here. Thanks again for everyone who joined in. These are always kind of fun for me. I like 3D modeling a lot, and this is the uh, easiest way I've found to try and incorporate it in a way, do a little bit of, of live, live design work. And the live stuff is a lot of fun anyway. Is Nicole? Yes, Nicole is going to fly out to pick it up. So anyway, thanks, everybody. Awesome. We'll see you. Tuesday for Scale News Update, Wednesday with Matt live, Friday night, hopefully another live kit build. And I know I've got some other videos that I'll have done in between. So thanks, guys. See you next time.